And so here's here's the high view of what, what we're talking about with attachment theory. First of all, is the principle that humans are wired to survive and develop in secure attachment relationships. So in other words, we are created for connection. We now know that literally the human brain and its optimal development is based in part upon the experience of these secure attachment relationships. So the caregiver to the child, the security felt in that bond, the sense of connection there, it literally stimulates the growth of the brain. They're not secondary needs. See, before John Bowlby, who's the father of attachment theory, before he came along and began uh, articulating these ideas, it was thought that the reason why an infant pair bonds to the mother is because the mother provides food, nourishment. Connection to the mother is secondary based on the primary need for food. That's not true. The connection itself, the secure attachment itself is a primary need. Because of that, here's the second bullet point there. Even the perceived threat to our primary relationships whether secure or insecure, whether those relationships or experiences secure or insecure, when we perceive them to be threatened, we process that as an issue of primal survival and as being traumatic. So if I walk into my house and I pick up on something in my wife's tone of voice or her facial expression that says we're not okay, I have a spike. I move toward fight or flight or freeze or flop or fawn or one of those threat responses when I think a relationship is not okay. When a kid, like my daughter, three years old, she's running around outside, she trips and falls, she's hurt, she immediately calls for her mama or daddy, right? Because it's wired into us that the loss of the relationship is a threat, but when there's a threat, the presence of the relationship, so the reverse is true as well, can be a source of comfort and protection. But what happens is these early relational experiences that we have become organized as patterns of relate, relating, serving as templates for how we do relationships. So we all have what is called attachment styles. And this is a non-conscious sort of template that we are walking around with all through life. And as I interpret what's happening in relationships, I'm interpreting it through the lens of this template, whether it's a secure attachment style, preoccupied, dismissive, fearful, avoidant, disorganized, which we're not going to have time to get into all the particulars of those today, but we all have a, an attachment style. So what that means practically is when I feel threat, I'm going to lean more on that template and what I expect to happen in the relationship, then my actual attention to what is happening right here, right now in this relationship. And it has the result of me automating my partner and myself. I go into this automatic mode where I'm just following this script of how I think things are going to go. And those are rooted in these early, early attachment experiences. The big headline for the couples in a recovery model is from attachment theory is that feeling safe and secure in the relationship is a vital need for you and your partner. When we don't feel safe and secure in the relationship, we are going to react one way or another. We are going to be in a state of threat or we're going to avoid do a flight response, which is itself based in a state of threat. Okay. It's just a little more subtle, a little harder to get in touch with.